Um, it has a chance to be sort of a revolutionary item because we could do something better or just be able to answer questions we never thought we could. Sue Feligi is a fine wildlife biologist, my research partner and the team leader from UMD. She is the proverbial energizer bunny who somehow manages to do that without the benefit of caffeine. She is amazing at keeping her eye on the science while coordinating the logistics for the group. We are slowly convincing her she looks really good in pink. All right, it is Friday, June 12th at 4.19 on Bear Patrol. And we're dealing with a grizzly about a mile away, maybe a little less. I'm not gonna lie, there's gonna be some pucker factor walking back through those willows tonight. Chris Feligi is the go-to person when chores need done or things need moved. He too is a bundle of energy, but he is caffeine driven. So that grizzly that we looked at earlier came up and hit the fence. You can see the sag in it right here. This was tight when we left it. He's a skilled cook in his own right, but is now mastering the art of cooking for a mob of starving people. You can see his paw prints as he was running away here. Mike put this in perspective. It's about the size of his hand. Andrew dubbed him one of the camp's Doobie Brothers, for reasons probably only known by Andrew. And he took off hauling ass. Mike Kokorin is the other Doobie Brother. He is our chief pilot and my partner when it comes to fixing things. We flew the wings off this little aircraft over up there. Batteries, I can tell you exactly how long they work, and it's different than what the box said. I assure you, it's way off from what the box said. Typical of skilled helicopter pilots, he is maniacal about organization, and that is a major reason yep. our UAV work has gone so well. He's the only person who drinks more coffee than Chris. <laughs> Andrew Barnes is the senior graduate student on the project. He's becoming a master at keeping the station running. He provides a level of subtle entertainment for those of us who watch carefully. And among, yes. among the most important yeah. things I keep in my journal are uh, obviously my data and day-to-day -day activities. But I also record uh, meals and often it's a, you know, a lot of meat and carbs. <laughs> Fresh vegetables are hard to come by. Yeah. He is hardcore when it comes to getting the science done and done correctly. For some odd reason, he's very proud of his dainty feet. Sam Hervey is the new Andrew in training. He is of the Chris mold of moving heavy loads through tough terrain with no complaints. He only needs a bit of, I would call it end of day encouragement with promises of the snack of the evening. Chris is fun anywhere, but he likes pranks. Andrew's big thing is he loves Pop-Tarts. So Susan brought up, I don't know, like a box of 24 Pop-Tarts or something like that. And just to screw with Andrew, he would eat a Pop-Tart and stuff the wrapper in Andrew's like coat pocket every day and just let them like accumulate. I don't know, even know if you ever found them or not. He's the one person in camp who's always smiling. Yeah. Or is that really a <laughs> sly grin? Okay, everyone, stay clear. Three, two, one, launch. Time to launch, time to take off. This project certainly ranks uh, among the most satisfying projects that I've worked on, and I've been flying aircraft of different types, manned and unmanned, for now over 25 years. And as much as everyone likes to watch the aircraft fly, and, and the media takes pictures of it, and people believe that's what unmanned systems are or drones are, the aircraft really means almost nothing when it comes down to it. Uh, the real information is driven by the sensors. Uh, you could easily see on the imagery goslings, uh, you know, baseball-sized objects, all the way through you know, the, the park area that we had covered without question. Non-rated pilots can fly these systems just as professionally, frankly, if not more so than historically trained pilots that come from man flying. Uh, these folks did a fantastic job. I think this team is just getting warmed up. Having run this operation for nearly 50 years, I find the UND crew to be a delight to work with, committed to the science and the work. They fully understand that safety comes first, quality science second, and fun third, but a damned important third. As a group, they've embraced the near communal lifestyle of La Perouse Bay, driven by a from each according to their ability and to each according to their needs kind of philosophy. Happily for me, their abilities are amazingly extensive and their needs are few. Well, there is scotch and of course good food. Rocky has had this rule, I think since camp has been started too, that no matter what goes on, drama or no drama, like if you're mad at someone for the day or whatever, everyone comes together and eat supper together. What do you eat? 
there's supper and there's second supper. Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> and then after supper, mince. And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dinner is a time not just to eat and unwind, but it is also a field leveling opportunity where everyone is encouraged to add their perspectives. The amount of product productivity in an evening of tossing ideas back and forth at the dinner table um, is just incredible to just sit there and watch this sort of happen. Many of the advances over the years have been student driven and our strength draws from everyone's openness to learn. And it was Bill Nye who said that everyone you will ever meet will know something that you don't know. So it's not as if there's authorities. It's not as if there's someone whose word is law. 